So that's how the Phoenicians wrote it. Same letters, and if that's looking a little familiar, that's because, you know, us fellow Semites, the Jews, uh, use very similar letters, and, uh, and there's uh, Kotl in, uh, uh, in our kind of letters. Uh, and again, the Greeks were a little mixed up. They had the vowels in the wrong place. Uh, I'll, I'll make them right here. Um, also, you might know this, uh, this much younger guy, uh, Eiffel. Uh, you might know him by the name of Euclid. Uh, he, he taught us that there's something called a point that is nothing. It's got no size whatsoever. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, they're a little hard to write. So, so usually when we write them, you can actually see them, but that's wrong. They don't count for anything. I'll throw in a couple of pintalach. <laughs> What's it say? Yeah, another thing is the Greeks wrote backwards. <laughs> the right way to write is that way. And that says the spelling ain't so great, but what it says without any doubt is latke. <laughs> so Cratylus. <laughs> is the locker. Now we come to the other kid. That's Hermogenes. Okay, now this is a piece of cake, or <laughs> more like a slice of pie. So there's something in between. Uh, like before, the stuff on the end, that's Greek. We don't need it. We'll get it. <laughs> And the stuff at the beginning, well, that's an abbreviation. It's uh, Horav <laughs> Morgan. <laughs> the Rabbi Morgan. Now, he wasn't really a rabbi. We just called him that because he was such a smart kid. <laughs> What's a Morgan? A Morgan is a shield. What kind of a Morgan do you suppose this is? I'm Morgan David. <laughs> and as many of my predecessors at this symposium have pointed out, the Morgan David, the shield of David, is really <laughs> a couple of home costumes. So the whole story is actually an allegory, right? When Rabbi Socrates is talking to Cratylus, he's talking to Alatka. When, when he's talking to Hermogenes, he's talking to Homantasha. So all we've got to do is study the text and figure out who Rabbi Socrates thought was uh, uh, the cleverer. So here's the story. Cratylus and Hermogenes come to the rabbi. They're having a dispute, a tiff, a spat. And Hermogenes is all worked up. He says, Rabbi, Cratylus here, this Yutz, is telling me that I'm not Hermogenes. <laughs> Rabbi turns to Cratylus. Uh, he says, uh, isn't he Hermogenes? No. <laughs> Why do you say he's not Hermogenes? That's not his name. Hermogenes is not his name? No. First of all, he's not a rabbi. Secondly, if he were a rabbi, he wouldn't be the rabbi, because there's lots of rabbis. And third, he's not a shield. Do you think that, God forbid, if we were drafted and sent into battle, he would let me use him as a shield and walk behind him? So that's not his name. So the rabbi turns to uh, Hermogenes and he says, uh, uh, don't you think that uh, Hermogenes is the wrong name for you? He says, no. He says, well, why isn't it the wrong name? And Hermogenes says, well, it's all tradition. It's just plain tradition, custom and tradition. That's all there is to names. Reminds me of a story. <laughs> a young rabbi comes to a synagogue where the old rabbi, Nebuch, uh, has suddenly died young rabbi doesn't know the customs of this synagogue, but he figures he'll just conduct the services, find out what, what goes on. Now there comes a point in the service where the Ten Commandments are read. 
And according to one tradition, the congregation stands. According to another tradition, the congregation remains seated because all of the Torah is holy and every letter is holy. My wrong? <laughs> Um, and the rabbi doesn't know what the tradition is, so he just persists, he carries on, and uh, they get to that point in, in the service. Half the congregation stands, half the congregation remains seated. Those who are standing are screaming at those who are seated, stand up. Those who are sitting down are screaming at those who are standing up, sit down. And uh, the rabbi goes away confused, but he finds out that uh, one of the original congregants is still alive in an old folks' home. He goes there, he's going to find out. And he says, Mr. Cohen, that was in fact his name, he says, uh, I was trying to find out what your tradition in the shul is. When we came to the Ten Commandments, half the congregation stood, half the congregation remained seated. Those who were standing were yelling at those who were sitting down. Those who were sitting down were yelling at those who were standing up. What's your tradition? Mr. Cohen says, that's our tradition. <laughs> right name, yes. Um, why is Latke the right name? He says, well, uh, it starts with a liquid sound, a gliding, smooth, oily sound. And when you start to cook latkes, you start with oil. And uh, Rabbi Socrates says, uh, but, uh, doesn't the word end with two hard sounds? And uh, wouldn't that mean that you would end up with greasy rocks? And, and so it goes, actually much too long. Um, but in the end, you learn, without any doubt, that Hermogenes has the better idea, and Cratylus uh, is full of beans. <laughs> so, if you want to eat smart, Eat homentaschen. I'll give you one more brief proof. Much later, there was a young guy, a uh, wonderful rabbi, and an even better physician named Rambam. You might call him uh, Maimonides. And he really understood ailments. He wrote, and he knew what was important. He wrote an entire treatise on hemorrhoids. <laughs> it's true. Great words of wisdom. Uh, let me translate from the Arabic. Loose stool is better than the opposite. That's what the Rambam taught us. Look in the middle of the Hamantash. Prunes. So eat smart. Eat healthy, eat homantasha.